pop it off. The Grand Sheik and the chairman of Moorish America are empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the prophet and the grand body of Moorish America. The assistant Grand Sheik is to assist the Grand Sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And it is known before the citizens of Moorish America. All meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on Friday, the first man was formed in flesh. And on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended into the father God Allah. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all citizens of Moorish America. No citizen is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. All citizens must preserve these holy and divine laws and all citizens must obey the laws of the government because by being a Moorish American, you're a part and parcel of the government and must live the life accordingly. No organization of Moorish America is to cause any confusion or overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but obey hereby. With us, all citizens must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are a part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folk, black people or Ethiopians because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now and all men must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Juwali the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the Northwestern and Southwestern shores of Africa. All citizens must promptly attend their meetings and become part and parcel of all uplifting acts of Moorish America. Moorish Americans must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of Moorish America. And then you are entitled to the name faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their body clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Jew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah, Islam. I'll start with the prayer. Ah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. To be proclaimed at every meeting, from the prophet. I'm glad to know I have a few faithful Moors among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me in the movement now and by the same people of our side of the nation that claim it was only a joke and unreal. But now, since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend on, for their earthly salvation and as an American citizen. They are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they themselves can take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that contribute to the movement and uplifting funds. The ones that pay their divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. This is why I'm calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet and your divine Moorish movement. I need finance and I need it bad. Never before have I needed finance as badly as I do at present, that I may shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. 
It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without me, the prophet being the head. It has been proven by my work, which I have performed in the last few months because I was at the governor's inauguration to represent the Moore's divided national movement. And I will be at the inauguration of President Hoover for the same cause, Nobuju Ali. Can everybody hear me? Is it, is it, is it, can you make it out? I know I'm outside. Clear. Clear. It's loud and clear. Transitioning to the misunderstandings of purpose concerning Noble Jew Ali by Brother Taz Tariq Bey. I have always found it troubling to see and recognize that many sincere and or seriously interested natural persons have displayed an air of delusionment, confusion, or misunderstandings concerning the direction and purpose of the Morris Divine and National Movement. It must be emphasized to all people who receive Morris culture class instruction that Noble Jew Ali was a universal prophet because Noble Jew Ali is a universal prophet. Public airing of his literature and message is directed to the people of North America at large and not just to the fallen Moors, his people. The prophet Noble Jew Ali made a firm and compelling plea to the nation and presented to us the specific grand principle of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Upon making this historically famous plea, the prophet addressed the people qualifying their loyalty. This is the specific order in which the prophet clearly addressed three specific bodies of the people who make up the citizenry and or body politic of North America. One, all loyal and faithful Moors. Two, members, nationality card, nationality card holding members of the temple. And three, American citizens. Warning, remember that the prophet directed his call to the above mentioned peoples in the public arena. Look at the order or sequence in which those he addressed is placed. Do not allow anyone to try to convince you or your children that he, the prophet, did not address the above said peoples. Let no one without a challenge try to imply in any way that any of the above stated persons have no right to possess the prophet's literature or writings or that they cannot or should not talk about analyzing or discuss those things which our prophet brought to us. If anyone has any doubt, to the correctness of what I have just said, then go to the prophet's own words, which are written in the Moorish literature booklet under the editorial, A Divine Warning by the Prophets for the Nation. It is upon this document that the Moors Order of the Round Table bases its origin and purpose. This is why I have set about the task of producing literature to counter the subversives amongst us. It is not personal. It is for the nation and the Moors divine national movement. The social, spiritual, and political proper person concepts and proper conduct initiatives, which the prophet encouraged the people to act upon must be made common public information and should be readily available in every public library and on display in any of the various bookstores. However, history and the records show that a few subver sub subversive characters, persons deceitfully presented themselves as honorable and sincere members within the Moorish temple and thereby successfully gained positions of authority and power within the Moorish movement. Some of these traitorous, disingenuous and selfish persons set upon their work an intent of slowing down or neutralizing the Moorish divine and national movement. Upon analyzing Moorish literature and information, the oral and written words of many honorable sheiks and sheikhesses, the limited records made available by the FBI, a pattern of negative intent and actions can be easily discerned and recognized. The following are a few of those recognizable acts or actions which are derivative of the above said pattern of negative intent. One, any and all attempts made at neutralizing the prophet Noble Jew Ali by way of suppression of the exposure of his pleas 
messages and literature as it was all directed to all loyal, faithful, and the people, faithful Moors and to the people at large. Two, the artificially injected divisions and schisms presented presently existing among the Moorish Holy Temples of Science, Moorish Science Temples of America, and the Moorish Divine National Movement, and all its manifest branch institutions. Three, the false claim that Moors do not vote in the national elections, which is qualified, and in their proper person status. Four, the false claim that Moors are not to be civically active. Five, the false claim that Moors are not to study and or act upon the national constitution of and for the governance of the United States and for the governance of the United States Republic, North America, which was prepared for all free national beings. Six, the false claim that Moors are not part of this said government, i.e. the United States Republic of North America. Seven, the lack of refined instruction on and about the social and political effects concerning the truth about the theft of the suppression of the Moorish nationality and birthright issues, etc. Eight, lack of recorded documents and accountability to the Moors concerning the collection of the accountability of the people for and the proper dispensation and spending of the people's finances. Nine, the lack of study analysis and truth about the legal and or lawful implications concerning the alterations of words of a document or the deletion of words in or from the, any established constitution or lawful or legal document. Note, note should be taken that the divine constitution document of the Moors Holy Temple of Science as presented to the Moors from Noble Jew Ali or prophet was altered by someone within the movement when Noble Jew Ali was in the midst of an institutional pressure and violation from persons within the movement. Take note of an important and often overlooked alteration, which was made at least three times within the divine constitution document, which alters its meaning and purpose. So we're gonna go into a couple words that have been altered. The original divine constitution of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science states, the term part and parcel. The altered divine constitution of the Moorish Science Temple of America reads part and partial. Do you hear Moors analyzing or discussing the circumstances upon which these obviously serious yet unaddressed changes were made? Noble Jawali commanded the Moors to study, study, study. Cannot the Moorish American read? Why has no one of importance to the Moorish movement pointed out this flaw to the Moorish national citizenry? Why has no correction been made? Who is protecting the prophet in the Moorish movement? Will the honorable Moors please stand up? The issues relative to the undermining works instituted against Moorish American progress in North America and initiated by and or through the subversives amongst the Moors are not limited to the foregoing. However, I feel the above are well worth mentioning for the purpose of warning those who become conscious of their Moorish nationality and birthright issues. Many newly conscious Moors may inadvertently find themselves among unwelcoming, exploitive, opportunic, opportunistic, or cliquish Moors. Beware that such are not the programs as presented by the prophet, nor is such the mission of the Moorish movement. The above also applies to the Europeans amongst us who are often, who may oftentimes pretend not to know the true and illustrious connection and influence of Moors to the founding of this great Republic and of the constitutionality undermining subversives on their side of the nation. All parties must confess, support, enforce, and uplift our free national constitution and declare one free national name. Remember that the name America applies to two major continents, an isthmus and the adjoining islands. What is your nationality?
Upon recognizing that critical misunderstandings about buried and yet vital issues involving Moorish American history, law, and government existed and exists also among many conscious Moorish Americans, I feel the need and obligation to at least address the same to the best of my knowledge and ability. I also recognize that this includes members of my own direct nationalized family. This is why I have prepared a few Morris children lesson books for my daughters, my sons, my nieces, and my nephews to share some of those studies with you, trusting to do some good. If one would wonder or desire to have a clearer understanding of focus and purpose of and for their own actions and purpose of involvement and connection to the Moorish Divine National Movement, then I would advise the following. Thoroughly read, analyze, and etymologically uh, study in word and law, Prophet Noble Jew Ali's divine warning by the Prophet for the nations, Prophet pleas to the nations, Moorish leaders, historical message to America, etc. Therein, unerringly, you will be informed of the Moorish mission, instructed and directed of, and to the true person, the true purpose of the mission, and given a solid foundation upon which to base your studies, your actions, your dedication, and your associations. With a clearer understanding that the Moorish movement in North America is the great legacy left to us by our prophet, you will recognize that the movement belongs to we, the people. With a solid background knowledge of the above stated literature, your acts, your obligations, and connections to the Moorish Divine National Movement will be firm and unshakable. And to this great humanitarian cause, honorable Moors pledge allegiance, peace, prosperity, and progress. There are many institutions, movements, and organizations that came directly out of or are under the universal umbrella of the Moorish Divine and National Movement. Many have studied Noble Jew Ali's words and works and teachings and have applied them well. Many have not. Some people came into the Moorish Movement to help. Others came into the Moorish Movement to profit off the suffering of the people and to cause division and problems. Some were agents of enemies to the cause of uplifting the people, and others were trying to undermine Noble Jew Ali's efforts to raise the economic, social, spiritual, and political conditions of the Moors. Noble Jew Ali said the half has not been told. If I told you everything, you would go back to sleep. Study yourselves. By reason of progressive development and by reason, reason of countering the stagnation and sellout nature of corruption that has always plagued the Moorish divine and national movement, many studied Moors develop expanded informational approaches to facilitate solving the many negative problems facing the nation. There were in the past, as are in the present, positive and progressive Moors dedicated to the cause of uplifting fallen humanity. There are many people, however, who sought out positions of power and authority for the purpose of deliberately hiding and nullifying the national political application side of the Moorish movement. Without government structure and civil activity, the proper benefits of reclamation of the Moorish nationality can never be realized for the lack of true economic security. This is why those who oppose Noble Jew Ali's universal Moorish movement usually feign ignorance to the civics nature of the Moorish movement or condemn those who are working to protect the unalienable political rights of the Moorish Americans, etc. If one studies the universal principles of government, national and international, one can quickly surmise who and where opposition and deception against the people's rights exist. Keep in mind that the freeing of a people from usurpation, color of law, false history, tyrannical religious dogma, 
brand appellations, et cetera, also directly and indirectly affects the profits and political power of those who have benefited from the status quo conditioning. The Moorish nationality issue is a threat to slaveholders and their Negro bred overseers alike. Be aware and study the positive and negative history of the Moorish divide national movement. So as to enable oneself to recognize those to recognize those who would seize upon the ignorance of the people. Such persons will often misuse the presentment of government activities without teaching of the contractual nature of the same. Such misrepresentation misrepres serves the intent for selfish gain, whether finance or other forms of benefit. A well-rounded knowledge of civics, law, and history will quickly expose any and all leech-nurtured opportunities, opportunists, and traitors to cause and principles of uplifting the fallen Moors and humanity at large. Where there is a just government, there is accountability to be governed. Look for constitutions, covenants, treaties, bylaws, etc., among other things. If they are absent, look for fraud and theft. Note, in Moorish culture, you are encouraged to read, research, and study as a normal state of custom, duty, and general affairs. You have a responsibility to self and to your nation to feed the mind and dispel ignorance. About three important writings by Noble Juali. If one would wonder or desire to have a clearer knowledge, understanding of focus and purpose about the Moorish divine and national movement in North America, then study the words of the prophet and founder of the Moorish movement. It is therefore presented and subscribed in the best interest of the people to read these documents for themselves instead of being preoccupied with non-productive and unfounded opinions or debates. Note, the above text is the first paragraph of an excerpt of a highly volatile and impacting plea proclamation and notification expressed through Noble Jew Ali's letter, January 8th, 1929. That's what I read at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, note, this is a pertinent commentary about the historically important and suppressed letter issue by Noble Jew Ali and dated the 18th of January, 1929. Keep in mind that only months later, Noble Juwali suffered highly questionable injuries and his, eventually, his eventual physical demise after a false arrest set up at the hands of Chicago policemen in collusion with others who are not directly named in this treatise. The purpose of which is to make an examination of the subject matters of honor, credibility, and integrity concerning those who have claimed to respect, support, and love the prophet and the Moors divine and national movement of North America, et cetera. Consider that we can do in these days to regain the respect for the temples and sincere members who have worked for years to keep the doors open for the coming generations the good among the Moors should not suffer the lack of credibility problems, which were created by a few underhanded and dirty Moors. They should not be allowed to overshadow the good and loyal Moorish Americans. Note that Noble Jew Ali was abused and beaten when then eventually released into the hands of awaiting disingenuous traitor Moors and other subversives 
who have formerly infiltrated the Moorish Science Temple of America and who are secretly working to undermine the Moorish Divine and National Movement at the, at the behest of President J. Edgar Hoover through channels of the FBI and CIA. Take note that a death certificate was issued upon the instance of Noble Jew Ali's veiling his form and was dated July 20th, 1929. There were various less than honorable activities initiated by some disingenuous Morris Americans who were working against Prophet Noble Jew Ali during the volatile, the volatile period of time in the 1920s. Communications made between demo government agents and some of these subversive persons and some members of the temple. Some of these communications can be gleaned from redacted FBI papers, which were released years ago from the Freedom of Information Act. At this point, I refer the reader to statements made by Noble Jew Ali concerning the most powerful weapon in the hands of the group of Moorish Americans for intercommunications and social political defense. All scholars, amunist masters, adepts, grand sheets, temple members, and erudite of jurisprudence should note a very important fact and point of history to examine and critique the following statements with a supportive yet unbiased mind. The letter attached below in full is a powerful and revealing excerpt from a speech made and issued by Noble Jew Ali. It was also published in 1929 in the Moorish Guide newspaper. There is something, however, that is very strange about Noble Jew Ali's position on matters referred to in his speech. When considering the lack of support on these newspapers, maintenance matters. Isn't it an interesting and troubling fact that you rarely hear of any statements and organizational support of uh, Noble Jew Ali's position on the press? Particular curiosity should be rightfully directed towards recognizing the absence of many otherwise vocal grand governors and grand sheiks who have been in authoritative control of the administrative seats of government within the Morris Science Temples of America. Note that many of these so-called persons were instrumental in seeing that the newspapers, which were started by Noble Jew Ali for the Moorish Americans were not maintained, were quickly shut down and were not resurrected in any serious or meaningful production or manner. Read Noble Jew Ali's statements and consider why many natural people who have become conscious about their Moorish nationality and birthrights have displayed limited confidence in the leadership of more science temples of America before and at the current period, 1982 to nine, uh, from 82 to 92 and so on. Read for yourselves and consider what you are able to do to aid and assist in helping uplift fallen humanity by producing literature and newspapers, et cetera. So more must produce literature for the people at large. To assure national communications for all Moorish Americans, et cetera, as instructed by our illustrious and dedicated prophet, Noble Jew Ali. Now I read that at the beginning of the meeting. Now, after reading this often suppressed letter, written by Noble Jew Ali, which he commands to be read at every meeting, please review the following statements and make comparisons of purpose to the spirit of his charge and plea to the, lo the loyal Moors to counter internal subversives, subverters. Here are a couple quotes to be looked at in addition to what I read in the beginning of the meeting. I am a universal prophet and my philosophy will be universal. I came to you Moors because you needed the most. The greatest weapon in the hands of our group today in America is our press. The truth will never be told about a disadvantaged minority by the general press of any country 
whether that minority be racial, political, or religious, unless we express ourselves through papers of our own. The truth about us will never be told. Our papers are our only hope of shoveling ourselves out from under the avalanche of lies that are annually upon us. A strong free press is the best possible safeguard of the liberties in general promotion and defense of the interests of a free people. We organized as the Moorish Holy Temple of Science in the year 1925 and were legally incorporated as a civic organization under the laws of the state of Illinois in November 29, 1926. The name Moorish Holy Temple of Science was changed to Moorish Science Temple, May 1928, in accordance with the legal requirements of the Secretary of the State in Illinois. Help me to save my people who have fallen away from the constitutional laws of government. I am depending on your support to get them back into the constitutional fold again, that they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. Honor is the greatest. Honor to the Prophet Noble Dry Lee. Honor to Taj Tariq Bay for putting this together with this presentation for all of us to be moving in this divine order like that. You know what I'm saying? As it was read, presented through. Touch to be big, like that's some all more is not right there. So if y'all think where it's at, early day publications.com, go study more, study for this study. Islam. Islam. So the key points through the reading for one, more they to produce literature that's equivalent to a press to get this information out, enforce the constitution. The, the, the words of Noble Juwali is not only religious for character, but he's telling you enforce the constitution. Noble Juwali never literally came out of his mouth and ever talked about a treaty, ever. That's why he said the half is, is, is told. And it's up to you as an individual to study. That's your duty as a more. Don't depend on an institution to teach you, even though that's what these temples, that's what our organization is about, to do that. But it's still your duty on your own time to study. The reason why he said the half has, has not been told, because as we see, like Moors like Taz Tariq Bey, uh, Asir the Duke of Tears, uh, uh, CM Bay came along and expanded the situation. That's why we're talking about treaty enforcement today. Because if Drew Ali saying enforce the constitution, what's article six of the constitution say? Treaties are the supreme law of the land. So keep in mind, yeah, follow noble Drew Ali's literature because that's the foundation, but don't just stop there. Take it further because he's telling you to take it further. Right? Um, Brother Cairo L, Islam, Rashad L, Islam. I'm not sure who. Uh... More study, more. Get the knowledge from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Hakeem Islam. Bay, you know what I'm saying? Abdullah Bay, you know what I'm saying? Jamal Sclarific, all the notes. Kujo L, get the knowledge from all the good Moors out here putting out the work. Yeah. yeah, and uh, remember, like, uh, in etymology, you know, enforce is spelled with the E-N, but it comes from the Latin phrase, I-N. So we know what I-N means, in, force. So it has to be enforced, you know what I mean, in you to give you strength, you know what I mean? But, like, you're right what you said, too, because uh, when you know the Constitution, then you, you know the Supremacy Clause, and then you start, you know, uh, referring that to, you know, the treaty and stuff like that. So, yeah, that makes sense. We don't, you know, more is coming into this info. Want to have a level-headed mind. You don't want to just get stuck 
because it's it's Moors that I that I hear talk that don't even talk about the treaty. They just talk about the, the prophet growing this, the prophet growing this, but they they in robot mode. They're not really getting the literature like that. You know. That's true. Yeah, that's true. It seemed like uh everybody is uh based on memory, you know what I mean, instead of actual practices, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's true. Uh anybody have any any thoughts? Um the brother uh Sheik Salim is not on here, so I was gonna go over uh a chapter in the Quran unless somebody else wants to read. Uh we're on chapter seven. I mean, I'm sorry, we're on chapter eight. Uh, the early Quran. Um, does anybody want to read chapter eight? Are you off in the read? You said you're going to read chapter eight, period, for year? Yeah, I got you. I got you. All right. You can put on the screen or something. Huh? You, you can put it on the screen. No, you can just read it. I mean, you, so, can, you can face your camera towards your book. Oh, I don't have the book in my in my hand right now. I thought you meant like something on the screen or something. No, 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 no. Uh, does anybody else have their Quran? If not, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. All right. Holy Quran, Moorish Holy Temple of Science, divinely prepared by Noble Jew Ali, by the guiding of his father, God Allah, the great God of the universe, to redeem man from his sinful and fallen stage of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his father God, Allah. Chapter eight, Yahshua reveals to the people of their simple ways. In all the cities of Orisa, Yahshua taught at Katak by the riverside. He taught the thousands of the people and the people followed him. One day, a car of Jagannath was hauled by the scores of frenzied men. And Yahshua said, behold, a form without a spirit passes by, a body with no soul, a temple with no altar fires. This car of Krishna is an empty thing for Krishna is not there. Whoever is not familiar with Krishna, we're dealing with the Hindu deity of activation of enlightenment, the activation of truth. So a, a vessel with no internal uh, divinity, right? So this car of Krishna is an empty thing, for Krishna is not there. This car is but an idol of a people drunk on wine and cardinal things. Allah lives not in the noise of tongues. There is no way to him from any idol shrine. Allah's meeting place with man is in the heart. And in a still small voice, he speaks. And he who hears is still ill. And all the people said to Yahshua, teach us to know the Holy One who speaks within the heart. Allah of the still small voice. And Yahshua said, the holy breath, which we know studying the one-on-ones what the holy breath is, is, is truth. So essentially the truth cannot be seen with mortal eyes, nor can men see the spirit of the holy one. But in their image, man was made. And he who looks into the face of man, looks into the image of Allah, who speaks within. And when man honors man, he honors Allah. And what man does for man, he does for Allah. And you must bear in mind that when man harms in thought or word or deed another man, he does wrong to Allah. If you would serve Allah, 
who speaks within the heart, just serve your near kin and those who are no kin, the stranger at your gates, the foe, the foe who seeks to do you harm, right? So taking the higher road, being assistance, being an assistant to fallen humanity, assist the poor and help the weak, do harm to none and covet not what is not yours. Then with your tongue, the Holy One will speak and he will smile behind your tears, will light your countenance with joy and fill your heart with peace. And then the, people's, the people asked Yahshua, to whom shall we bring gifts? Where shall we offer sacrifice? And Yahshua said, our father Allah asks not for needless wastes of plant, grain, dove, or lamb. So sacrificing animals, that's, that's not what it's about. That which you burn on any shrine, you throw away. No blessing can attend the one who takes the food from hungry mouths to be destroyed by fire. When you would offer sacrifice unto Allah, just take your gift of grain or meat and lay it on the table of the poor. So if you're going to burn some meat, talking about you're going to burn something, that's wasteful. Give, give it to the poor. From it, an incense will arise to heaven, which will return to your blessedness. Tear down your idols. They can hear you not. Turn all your sacrifice altars into fuel for flames. Make human hearts your altar and burn your sacrifices with the fire of love. And all the people that Yahshua was speaking with were entranced and would have Yahshua as a God. But Yahshua said, no, I'm not God. I'm your brother man. Just come to show the way of Allah. You shall not worship man. Praise Allah, the Holy One, Islam. Love. And that was chapter eight from the Holy Quran, divinely prepared by Noble Jew Ali. So once again, you know, we're not following men. We're following principles, right? And we must know the principles. So once again, the temple was not for someone to lead you to the promised land. The temple is actually a political movement. It's actually supposed to be a nation state, a body politic. We galvanize to come to each other's aid. Um, there's elected officials. It's supposed to be in each temple, the most competent people in each temple. Is supposed to make sure the civics activity um, is being, uh, the information is being passed out where other members of the temple are competent in civics. But like I say, it's everybody's duty to do that on their own as well. Any questions, thoughts? Any gray areas anybody have on any, anything? Please put them on the floor. Uh, when it, when he said, uh, "If man honors man, he honors Allah." So, so now, if men are dishonorable to men, is he dishonorable to Allah? You know, because a lot of people think they can uh, be that way, and then they do all these prayers and they utilize Allah's words or the words through the prophets to demonize people uh, based on their relationship, see? But if you really love Allah and you understand, then the way you honor Allah is honoring man, right? So right. if you're not honoring man, how can you honor Allah? Yeah. That, that's, that's the point that I be trying to make when it comes to you know, supreme love and putting in the extra work and being sincere about some of the things we're doing. You know what I mean? 
because things can look a certain way, but that's just how it looks. But right. what is really going on is always going to be the question. So us as Moors, you know, we got to start uh, either learn how to agree to disagree, walk away from those type of disagreements, and honor each other. If you want honor, you want to honor Allah, then honor man. It's like very simple, but we can't get, we always skip over those things, you know, because, you know, you, you actually can't see Allah physically doing something to you like a man, right? But like we said, everything is, you know, planned through Allah. Allah is the best of planners. So it was all meant to happen. So your duty in that is still to be honorable. That's the duty. After all the civics is already taught, after every, after Moors start, you know, being in the position that we're trying to get back in, you know, far as in, you know, being the ones that uh, rule the world, that's, how, we gonna have to start there where honoring men, you know what I'm saying? So, Islam. Islam. Allah and man are one. Yeah. Any uh, any other thoughts? Islam, Allah and man are one. You know what I'm saying? Give thanks, place. You know what I mean? Uh, and 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 that that right there is in the heart. He said, like he says, in the heart. Be Allah in the heart, and Allah. You know what I mean? That's that's where you got to show the purity. You know what I mean? Where it's pure. To do it with love, but Islam, great, great, um, great selection and on the on the more history and heritage. You know what I'm saying? Because this right here is this is divine. Islam, brother Cairo L. All right. So I'm going to close it out. Got two cents. Oh, you got some? Oh, go ahead, Pierre. Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, hearing like Allah and the honorable man. It's kind of a little bit of a paradox in the sense that if Allah's all, everything, that would include the dishonorable man as room for improvement to, you know, be a part of our community and tame our world. So even the dishonorable man has a lesson. Everyone gives you an L, you know, a lesson or something, some format. So, uh, for those Moors that aren't as honorable, it's still Allah functioning in some format for us to learn the lesson to overcome these weights of life. I mean, yeah, 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 and um, and that, that's that's essentially what it's about, man. The, the being a pure in heart, because every every man, every man is not pure in heart, and you know, be, being patient and putting out there certain principles to give men that are not pure in heart a chance, that's that's the whole point, you know, not to be so quick to be like, you know, up in arms or whatever. At least do some due diligence to put the lessons in front of that man, mm. to like give him a, a chance to correct his errors. Because that's what a humanitarian, that's what that's what this is about on, on the religious side, you know, the Quran principle side. You yeah, because uh Prophet said we're gonna be uh, you know what I'm saying, we're gonna be tested, man. You know what I mean? So gotta keep those things in mind, you know what I mean? And, and it keeps you focused more on the principles. You know, nobody is perfect, right? Imperfectly perfect. You know, we all gonna make mistakes, we all gonna do some things that other people do not like. But that's not the point. It's like, how do we handle it for both persons can grow from it? You know what I mean? It's the, it's really, the, you know, the gifts that we really have that we need to start utilizing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Also, I thought it was pretty neat when you said, uh, uh, when you quoted Noble Drawley saying, don't waste stuff burning around. You know, for the, you know, Allah or whatnot. I mean, it's like, don't pull one out for the homie. Like, you know, you can use that for the purpose. You know, you can light some incense and you can get smells, but don't be like killer animals. Like, it's a neat thing to say. Right, right. Because you see in most Bibles, right? They'd be like, I think it's Leviticus is heavy on that. Um, going to the altar, making sacrifices for the oh, for God, right? You know, mm -hmm. for, so, you know. 
that, that's wasteful. You know, you can get them animals to the poor. Why are you burning it? <laughs> you burning it for silly reasons, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's facts. It's like violating when you're thinking about the, you know, the people who has transitioned already. That that that's that's not something we're supposed to do neither. You know what I mean? Just wishing they were here, could come back and all that. Mm-hmm. Like so that if we doing things like that, you know, we really gotta, you know, tap into our studies, man, and get a better understanding. That's why it's important for us to because we're not gonna be able to study everything that everybody wants, but give y'all the tools so y'all can study yourselves because right. we all do, deal with different things, you know what I mean? So you know, I, I feel different about my grandmother dying from someone else's grandmother. Why? Because the knowledge. It's the knowledge of it. So we 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 gotta study, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um and like the brother um Cairo L put in the chat, man is truth and falsehood mixed. Right? So we just, it's back to the higher higher and lower self. We just trying to get these uh, lessons so we can ascend, you know what I mean? Because every man has a capability of falling to his lower self. Um, mm-hmm. The whole point of having you know, <coughs> groups, body politics, not only to enforce law and our political status outside the temple, but character, assisting different members in the temple to help everybody ascend to their higher self because everybody going through something that's the brotherhood part that's the sisterhood part you know what i mean yeah it's not about you know no grudges holding grudges none of that you're supposed to ascend past that because essentially that's a weakness that's that's what you call um in the the lessons of inconstancy in the the holy quran you're supposed to be able to go past that you know what i'm saying so it's a lot of functions that are you know, the temples and body politics are supposed to play. It's all supposed to happen in one time. You know what I mean? So um, we're we going to repetitionally go over the fundamentals. But like Jerry Bay just said, everybody got certain talents. Everybody got certain talents that they may want to expound on. It's certain people that may be astrology. They might gravitate towards that and come to a point where they add depth in that. And we have members in the temple that is add up astrologers, add up in whatever, growing crops, add up in medical, whatever, right? Add up in law. But that's where it's supposed to go. You know, people supposed to individually take it to a point where you you're 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 assisting the whole. You you because that's how you assist the whole. We, we become that much better when there's multiple individuals in the body that are great at certain things. Right. So I wanted to add that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, that's what Prophet said. Uh, the higher, you know, uh, the lower self is everything. The higher self is not. And the man is spirit. Right. So now. The body is lower self. Mm-hmm. So everything you do with the body is lower self. I don't care if you, you know, what I mean, you are healing people with the body. It's still lower self that you just got to learn how to utilize. You know, what I mean, the higher self, lower self, and the ego. That's just the main, they they there for a purpose. And us studying like this is going to teach us what what is it about? Like, what is the lower self for, you know? What is and the higher self, you know? Islam. Right. Islam. And to expand on that a little bit, I kind of hear like a parable of like John Wick <laughs> in Islam in the sense that uh, in, in our lower selves, like we're like in the shadow realm uh, of 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 our spirits, you know what I'm saying? Because on earth, light bodies, light shadows, all that casting, all that is like this low-key serve the table. You know what I'm saying? We, we work on this groundwork, our earthwork to build up, to, you know, live on this table in the ethereal realm. Right. Um, Brother Brandon Bay wants to go through the one-on-ones. If, does anybody have a one-on-ones uh, handy on them to go through?
All right, so I got. We can't put them up with you. Yeah, I gotta find a document right now. I, I got it, but it's like uh, sideways. That's why I'm like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if somebody got the one on ones on them. Go ahead and read it. I'm looking for the document so I can screen share it. But if somebody already got it on hand, just go ahead and read them off. Who made you? Allah. Who is Allah? Allah is the father of the universe. Can we see him? No. Where's the nearest place we can meet him? In the heart. Who is noble Drew Ali? He is Allah's prophet. What is a prophet? A prophet is the thought of Allah manifested in the flesh. What is the duty of a prophet? to save nations from the wrath of Allah. Who is the founder of the Moorish Science Temple of America? Noble Drew Ali. What was the year Moorish Science Temple of America founded? 1913 AD. Where? Newark, New Jersey. Where was Noble Drew Ali born? In the state of North Carolina, 1886. What is his nationality? Moorish American. What is your nationality? Moorish American. Why are we Moorish Americans? Because we are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. For what purpose was the Moorish Science Temple of America founded? For the uplifting of the fallen humanity. How did the prophet begin to uplift the Moorish Americans? By teaching them to be themselves. What is our religion? Islamism. What is the new? Is that a new or is that an old time religion? Old time religion. What kind of flag is the Moorish? It is a red flag with a five point green star in the center. What do the five points represent? Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. How old is our flag? It is over 10,000 years old, which is our holy day, Friday. Why? Because Friday is the day of which man was formed in flesh and it was on a Friday he departed out of flesh. Who was Yahshua? He was a prophet of Allah. Where was he born? In Bethlehem of Judea, in the house of David. Who were his father and mother? Joseph and Mary. Were you given brief the lineage, the line of genealogy through which Yeshua came? Some of the great father through which Yeshua came are Abraham, Boaz, by Ruth, Jesse, King David, Sol Solomon, Hezekiah, and Joseph by Mary. Why did Allah send Yeshua to this earth? to save the Israelites from the iron hand oppression of the pale skinned nation of Europe who were governing a portion of Palestine at that time. How long, how long has that been? About 2000 years ago. What was the nationality of Ruth? Ruth was a Moabitess. What is the modern name of for Moabites? Moroccans. Where's the Moroccan empire? Northwest of Mexum. What is the modern name for a Mexum? Africa. What is the title given to our ruler in Morocco? A sultan. Where did we get the name Yoshua from? The East. What does the name Yoshua mean? Yoshua means justice. Did the angel give to it the child that was called Yoshua a holy name? Yes, but can it be used by those, but it cannot be used by those who, who slave to sin. What is an angel? An angel is a thought of Allah manifested in human flesh. What are angels used for? To carry messages to the four corners of the world to all nations. What is our prophet to us? He is an angel of Allah who was sent to bring us the everlasting gospel of Allah. What is the everlasting gospel? It is a saving power that comes from Allah through our ancient fathers by his prophet. 
What is the covenant of the great God Allah? Honor thy father and thy mother, and thy days will be long upon the earthland, which the Lord thy God Allah hath given thee. At what age did Yeshua begin to teach? At the age of 12. Where did he teach? India, Africa, Europe. How long did he teach? 18 years. What did Yeshua say that would make you free? Truth. What is truth? Truth is I. What is I? I is Allah. Can truth change? Truth cannot change or pass away. What other name do we give to truth? Holy breath. What have you to say about holy breath? All we can say it is great. It is good. It was, it is, and evermore to be. I mean, at what place on earth was the physical part of man formed? In the Garden of Eden. Where is the Garden of Eden? In the land of Canaan, in the city of Mecca. What is the modern name of the Garden of Eden? Mecca. What is the name of the first physical man? His name cannot be used only by executive rulers of the AC of MST of A. What are the words AC of the MST of A? Adept Chamber of the Moorish Science Temple of America, Third Haven. Who were Adam and Eve? They were the mothers and fathers of the human family, Asiatics and Muslims. Where did they go? They went into Asia. What is the modern name given to their children? Asiatics. Who is regarding the holy city of Mecca today to keep, in, to keep the unbelievers away? Angels. What is, okay. What is the modern name of those angels? Asiatics. What is the shade of the skin? Olive. Are the Moorish Americans any relationship to those angels? Yes. We have the same father and mother. Give five names that are given to the descendants of Adam and Eve. Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon, and beast. What is a devil sometimes called the lower self? How many selves are there? Two. Name them, higher self and lower self. What people represent the higher self? The angels who protected the holy city of Mecca. What people represent the lower self? Those who are cast out of the city and those who accept their teachings. What is the higher self? The higher self is the mother of virtues and the harmonies of life and breeds justice, mercy, love, and right. Can the higher self pass away? No, why? Because it is Allah and man. What does the lower self breed? Hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harms. What did the higher self say to the lower self at the one time when he met him? Where are you going, Satan? What was the answer of the lower self gave to the higher self? I am going to and fro to earth, seeking whom I may devour. Has he finished his task of devouring? Yes. When has his time, de when has his time declared out? When he nailed Yoshua on the cross. What was the last words Yoshua uttered? It is finished. What did he have reference to? He had reference to the end of Satan. Did Yoshua say that he would return to conquer him? Yes. What is the name of the person into whom Yoshua was the first reincarnated? Prophet Muhammad, the conqueror. Was Satan to be bound then? Satan was to be bound in part. When was his head of Satan taken of 1453 Byzantine? By whom? By Muhammad. Name some of the marks that were put upon the Moors of Northwest by the European nations in 1774, Negro, Black, Colored, and Ethiopian. Negro, a name given to a river in West Africa by Moors because it contains black water. What is meant by the word black? Black according to science means deaf. What does the word colored mean? Colored means anything that is painted, stained, varnished, or dyed. What does Ethiopia mean? Ethiopia means something divided. Can a man be a Negro, black, and colored, or Ethiopian? No, why? because man is made in the image and likeness after God Allah. What does the Satan, what title does Satan give himself? God. Will you define the word white? White means purity and purity means God and God means the ruler of the land. To whom do you refer to at times as the great God? Allah. It is the devil made is the devil made in the image and likeness of Allah? No, he is the shadow of our lower selves and will pass away. 
who made the devil? Elohim. Who is Elohim? Elohim is the seven created spirits that created everything that ever was, is, and evermore to be. What is Elohim sometimes called? The seven eyes of Allah. How many days are in the circle? Seven days. How many days are in the creation? Seven days. According to science, how many days are in a year? Seven days. That's long. Wow. Islam, thank you. No, I see. I know those things by heart. Yeah. Um, I want to say Islam and Yelly Belly. I didn't realize that's what that was. I was trying to figure out who that was. But peace and love. Islam. Islam, mother. You got any uh, questions, thoughts, uh, Yelly Belly? Any any gray areas and anything? So I'm hearing, um, no, not at this time. I'm just, you know, listening and learning, absorbing everything. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure being here. Islam. Islam. Uh, Brother Imani, Islam. Islam, family. How you doing? I just seen you slid up in here. Uh, any, any questions, thoughts? All right, man. Uh, that's an RV, baby publications right it's like the questions the one the one on ones yeah uh that's in the booklet it's a it's in the book okay uh, but yeah, it's not on rv bay per se but yes yeah, you can order you can order the book on rv bay to get the one on ones though yeah i got some i got it all laminated the ones i have but uh you know i, I could send it like a screenshot for you inside the uh inside the group chat you know Islam. Islam, you money. Right, bro, appreciate it. Islam, bro. Islam. Brother Cairo L, you had any questions, thoughts, statements? Universal Wisdom Bay, do you have any thoughts? Statements, questions, concerns. Bill. Emperor Shuja L, any thoughts, statements, questions, concerns? Not at the moment. Brother Rashad L, any thoughts, statements, questions, concerns? <laughs> Islam. Islam, I wanted to say, like, if you, that, that's the, that's why it's very important, like, you guys, if we, when we focus on our higher selves and, and when we study ourselves, like, your vibration change, not by you and your thoughts momentarily, but overall, like, your energy change, and these are the type of people you start to pull in, you know what I mean, that's on the same mission as you, but remember, you know, it's always the opposite energy and the total opposite from what you're higher self is, is also pulling you another way. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be your mind. Like no matter how much we know, we still got to know how to make decisions, which we all were born with. You know what I mean? And we, we're going to have that for the rest of our lives. So obviously more is our moving in the right direction. I think now we back to making decisions, learning how to make decisions is going to be the key thing that everything that we do, you know? So it's fine to that, for real. Hundred fifty percent. Low key, I low key definitely want to get those read. This this is hundred percent. Like every single time that you read something like that, let's say Bob Proctor said it. He's like, when you read, you re-add something into your system. You know what I'm saying? So like when you put that truth back into your system, you put that back in your system. You ain't got no choice but to go up, and bring the people around you. Like for sure. It's a fact. Facts. It's long. Mm -hmm. Um, if nobody has any other thoughts, we can go ahead and close out um, in prayer. Go ahead and close it up. Can they hear me? Yeah. Okay.
Allah. Allah. The father of the universe. The father of the universe. The father of love. The father of love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom and justice. Freedom and justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. My salvation. By night and by day. By night and by day. Through his holy prophet. Through his holy prophet. Noble Jew Ali. Noble Jew Ali. Amen. Amen. Islam. Islam. Peace and love, Moors. Hope you have a beautiful rest of y'all Sunday. Peace and, and love. Uh, we'll see everybody on Wednesday. Islam. Islam, 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 Islam,